Um, also, one of the uh, kind of reasons why I, I really noticed your activity and you've been very outspoken, and which I think is amazing for amazing that you, that we have you here in Latvia, especially for gay community. Um, and as I had a little chat before, I said that um, like when I lived in Canada, I was exposed to gay community more and I started to understand more about the, the problems and the issues and the challenges this community is facing on a daily basis, which is in Vancouver and Canada is not, not as bad, but I would meet some people who would move specifically from these small towns because they finally can like, you know, get out of the closet and all this thing. And I remember, so I worked as a dancer. So my listeners, uh, I've, I've talked about this before in my other podcasts. So I worked in the gay club as a go-go dancer. And uh, here in Latvia, I actually used to be part of Edmund de Vesa on the day studio. That was, I used to compete in uh, uh, world championships as a hip hop dancer. And then I used to do ballroom dancing. So I danced since I was a kid. But anyways, when I was exposed to gay people, and um, I remember there's this one guy, he comes over to me after I did the show, he comes over to me and like this big guy, like very serious face, and he looks at me like, ooh, not, not nice dancing. I was like, oh, thank you, thank you. And um, do, do you have any plans later today? Like we, I'm having a party in my house. I was like, yeah, oh yeah, sure, I could come over and stuff. And then, and then somehow I was just like, are you like interested in me? And he's like, yeah, you're quite cute. And I was like, you gay? Because <laughs> he came across so straight to me. I thought like he was more straight than I ever been in my life. But then we talked about later, he became a very good friend of mine. He said that he had to be in this closet for like till he was like 20 years old. And, and then you kind of little by little, you hear more of these stories and how people struggle to get out. And, and then actually the other guy who was like my mentor, he's older gentleman now, his name is David. And uh, he also grew up in this small town where he had to get married and his, uh, he, his wife already had a child, so they didn't have to have their own kids, whatever. But only when he moved to Canada, to Vancouver, again, he can be openly be talking about it. And you, and you think Canada is so much more, but not. But uh, comparingly with Latvia, I remember that I just could just imagine how people struggle with this kind of, uh, kind of thing. And then I just love that you are there with this flag there and just always uh, helping and protecting. And, and I'm, I'll listen to some of your interviews before that when you said like, come on guys, let's get out and let's, you know. And I remember also there was this one nasty year and probably there were more of them before when there was this one pride when these old ladies come out with the bags of craps throwing at people and stuff 2005 like that. 2005 and 2006. Yeah, yes. and then and then at the time, just because I'd never understood like, and we never been, no one talks about that in the school, my parents wouldn't talk about it. Like we, definitely there's in my little school in Vilan, which is like 6,000 people, there's definitely gay people, everywhere gay people. You know, lesbians, gay people, it doesn't matter. And, and I was just like thinking about like, so I had a classmate or something who was probably sitting there and we talking about, we're gonna go dance and hang out with ladies and all that stuff. And they think like, well, I just need to hide it and I can't do anything about it. Yeah, so and they're was, gonna come along and watch you while you're dancing with the ladies. There you go, yeah. But then, um, then with, yeah, just really wanted to say thank you for that. And I want to ask you, so how do you see the difference now, like since you moved here and to this point, like the progress, was there like the stagnation at some point? Um, um, the first thing I want to say is that um, you are what is known as gay for pay hey. in, in our world. <laughs> Um, but, uh, Show me the dollar. <laughs> yeah. I was paying for my university. That yeah. was the only reason I was yeah. gay for pay. Well, nevertheless. <laughs> um, the, the fact that I am gay got here before I got here by myself, myself. I was the first openly gay American Latvian back in the day and um, I was the first openly gay Latvian here in Latvia for a while, you know the only gay in the village twice, as, as they put it in Little only Britain. Only gay in the village. I'm the only gay in the village. Um, I love that show, by the way. Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, when I came here, it was with this sort of idea that I had been like a gay activist in America mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for all this time, so now I was gonna be a Latvian activist. And it took, it was like four months here before I met another gay man here in wow. Latvia. And it was at the, Reestablishment Congress of the Latvian Social Democratic Workers Party, mm -hmm. where he and I were there as translators um, for foreign dignitaries who were there. And um, I don't know where he learned English as well as he did. He was a local, but he, he also spoke very good English. And it was sort of, you know, one 
poke, 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 and, and, and I discovered that he was gay, and we, we both fell into this relationship which wasn't good for him and it wasn't good for me. Yeah, yeah. So, so that, but, but it was just such a relief to find a, a, gay, person, someone, yeah. a gay person here. And then I went back to America and lived in Washington, and Washington has a very good gay community, um, and a very interesting one. And when I came back to Latvia again, it was with sort of, you know, what you're going to do. Because I've never been a particularly sexual person. Mm -hmm. um, I, I enjoy living by myself. I, I don't need a husband um, mm -hmm. or, or, or whatever. Um, and in, in politics, uh, back in the mid-90s, this, this fascist organization called the Latvian National Front started to publish a newsletter called DDD, which stood for Deoccupation and Debolshevization and D something else. Mm -hmm. And among other things, they published without comment or criticism the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, which is, you know, this grotesquely anti-Semitic forgery from the Tsarist era. They are anti-Semitic. And they were the first ones to be really publicly homophobic as well. Mm -hmm. They released a book called Homo hom Homophobia, the destruction of civilization, mm -hmm. and it had essays from various people. And as I was the only no, only openly gay person here, I figured prominently in this book. Um, eventually, uh, the first years that Latvia was independent, the community, such as it was, got a lot of help from um, Sweden, and particularly from Stockholm. The, mm -hmm. the Stockholm gay community sort of came and nurtured. And, and during the first years, we had um, various events and, and stuff like that. Um, part, partly the, the community can be traced through uh, the presence of gay bars mm -hmm. in, in Riga. Um, the very first one was up in the attic of the dormitory of a factory. Mm. And as you were going up the stairs, you know, people would be opening their doors and, and looking and, you, you know. You had to do a password. Yeah. <laughs> What's and the password? Not, not, not necessarily a password, <laughs> but you got up to the top and, and you had to bend your head because there were pipes all around. And, and then the bar itself, it, the door opened into three rooms in a row that were all, you know, in the Latvian style with wooden walls and, and, yeah. and whatnot. And when I went in there, the first thing I thought was, if an American fire marshal saw something like this, then, then, <laughs> um, and so that was there for a while. Then the next one to, for balance was in the basement of another building in Sadovnikova. Um, what was this that? 92, 93. Oh, a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, then for, for a lo the longest, um, lasting gay bar in Riga was called Purvs, mm -hmm. or the Swamp, yeah. um, which was, which was uh, for years and years and years. There was one called 808, which was the only really gay bar in the sense that it only allowed men mm -hmm. to come in, mm -hmm. no women. All the other bars have let, uh, let women in. Um, and since then, it has proven that Riga can support two gay bars, but no more. That, it, it's yeah. always been two. They, they, they have come and gone. There was one called XXL, and, and, uh, which is now called Top Club. There was one called the Golden, mm -hmm. um, Golden, Golden Bar. I that Actually, I went to Golden, I think. Yeah, yeah. that was nice. It was, mm -hmm. it was nice. Um, but only two, and now it's only one. Now it's only Top Club, because I think people have stopped going to bars. There was, there was, the pand well, pa yeah, there was, there was a pandemic. But now, I mean, you've got Grinder and, and whatever all those places are Grindr's called. Grinder's been around for a long time. Yeah. And I'm so jealous usually when gay guys just go and we hang out together and like, oh, wait, I'm going to be away for two hours. What happened? Oh, I got a match here. It's like, and I was like, show me the photo. And all it is is just penis. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, where's the face? I didn't give a fuck about the face. Yeah. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Bruno's Podcast.